Most people, even when encountering something peculiar, keep their eyes on their phones. But when one Oklahoma man set out to walk through his normal stomping grounds, as an odd figure caught his eye. Rather than keeping it moving, his nosiness prevailed, and his observations wound up making a life-saving impact. Jim Passmore of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma started his morning in the usual way. He got dressed, leashed his dogs, and set out into the crisp spring air. Nothing drove sleep from his body like trotting on woodland trails, breathing in the sweet smells of damp earth. His usual stomping grounds was Hikey Creek, a park frequented by outdoor lovers admiring the plentiful pecan trees. Runners and hikers legged around the quiet banks of the water. There, while waiting for his Yorkies to do their business, Jim spotted something out of the ordinary. A strange mass floated on the surface of the park's waters, sitting in stark contrast to the normally smooth surface of the creek. It was big, brown, and vaguely animal-like. Squinting to get a better look, he guessed the object was a log, but he wasn't sure. Edging closer to the shore, Jim stepped off the trail onto the muddy grass. If he could just get a closer look, he might be able to satisfy his curiosity. Finally, with a jolt, Jim realized that the thing wasn't a thing after all. It was covered in brown hair. It was alive. Feeling lucky to glimpse a wild creature in its natural habitat, Jim was only more intrigued. The unknown animal was moving, barely. Could it gently be stirring in its sleep? Floating, but rattled by a dream? Then his dogs began to snarl. The nearer Jim inched towards the animal, the more riled up his tiny pups got. Their predatory snarls and growls made it seem like they sensed some danger looming. Nevertheless, he grew concerned by the animal's feeble movements. It looked desperate and stuck. Since the thing was hanging out in a wooded, muddy creek bank, all signs suggested it was a beaver. Then, fresh off the revelation, he noticed something hidden in the brush that hinted towards a more sinister situation. A carrier. The case was large, the kind used to transport pets to the vet, and appeared abandoned. Poking around inside, Jim discovered a large, filthy blanket. What worried him more was that beneath the blanket was a heavy weighted chain. Standing there, Jim tried to piece together what was going on. Obviously, someone had discarded their carriage. Judging by the haphazard scene, the dirty blanket, the chain, the bitten and mangled cage, a cruel individual had dumped a helpless creature in the wild. Someone, Jim thought, intended to harm the animal, but it escaped. While understanding washed over him, a rustling in the woods got his attention. Another beaver crawled out of the undergrowth. Jim took this as a sign. Not fleeing from human contact, the beaver moved into the open. Jim watched, mystified, as it crossed the ground and moved closer down the creek's edge, towards the mystery creature. Seeing as he had pegged the mystery animal as a beaver, Jim took this new beaver's fantastical intervention as a positive omen to trust his gut. He approached the beaver, creeping the final few feet towards the floating animal. The other animal stirred weakly, trapped in the muddy suction of the water. Side by side, Jim knew he'd guessed wrong. The creature was way too big to be a beaver, unless it was a radioactive giant one. All along, the creature in distress had been a big, fluffy dog. Muck and grime concealed a gorgeous collie. Glad he further investigated the mystery creature, Jim stepped into the creek, now determined to save him. Better safe than sorry, Jim called out to some other pedestrians to give him a hand freeing the dog. They gathered around him, but as Jim had feared, any contact sent the dog into frenzy mode. It bit someone who got too close. With the creature still stuck in the mud, Jim reevaluated the strategy. They needed to be careful. Grabbing onto the scared pooch would only freak it out further, so in order to unstick the cranky thing, they needed a distraction. A solution popped into Jim's noggin. The dog couldn't bite what he couldn't see. Grabbing a dark sweatshirt, he draped it on the suffering dog's head. Cutting out all vision and light worked like a charm. The hairy critter appeared soothed. Now that the dog was subdued, they had to yank it free. It slipped further into the mud, and so would the rescuers if they kept standing in the goop. They needed a pulley system. 
Wrangling up a makeshift lift composed of dog leashes, they looped the ropes around its belly, planting their feet. The gang heaved. You'd figure several able-bodied men would pluck the helpless creature out in seconds, but it was as if this guy had been super glued. Finally, after one high-stakes game of tug-of-war, the dog slipped free. Elated, Jim pulled back the covering and wiped away the mud to reveal the dog's face. The dog looked thankful but understandably terrified. There was no telling how long the poor creature wrestled to free itself from the mud after its owner deliberately cast their pet away. All they could confirm was that the handsome doggy appeared perfectly healthy. Jim, a long-established dog lover, was furious. How could anyone abuse an animal, let alone their pet? He never would fathom. He phoned the police and officers arrived swiftly on the scene. Finally, the scared pet had advocates, and they set out to work to keep him safe. Upon further examination, the police began to piece together the sad truth of the dog's tale. Locked in an animal carrier, trying to bite its way out, the sweet creature had been dropped on the street. At some point, the cage had been struck by a car, sending it tumbling into the forest where it had landed in the muddy bank of the creek. By a pure miracle, the dog survived this horror story, mostly unscathed, but surely mentally wounded. If Jim hadn't been guided by the auspicious beaver, who knows if the poor thing would have made it out of the mud. But that magical appearance raised more questions than answers. Was the beaver signaling a fellow animal in danger, or was it pure coincidence? However, no one had time to ponder over the mystery. Officers realized the dog wasn't walking out of the paddock. They had to get a sizable dog, they dubbed Teddy due to his stuffed animal likeness, to the vet for an examination. Teddy was wiped out from his mud struggle. He appeared to be pretty overweight, and that, coupled with possible injuries, prevented leading him on a leash. In another twist of fortune, the rescuers found a wheelbarrow not too far away. Wrapped in a blanket, Teddy was carefully placed in the wheelbarrow and pushed out of the paddock. The next call Jim made was to Oklahoma Alliance for Animals. In a few minutes, they had made arrangements to take Teddy under their wings. In a way, Teddy dodged another attempt on his life, landing a spot with the OAA allowed him a chance at rehabilitation. His scared demeanor and his justified lack of trust of humans would have certainly marked him for a euthanasia if he had been taken to the shelter. Not to mention, Teddy bit one of the rescuers, which regrettably is a fast track for putting an animal to sleep. The rescue group refused to give up hope for his future, fearing that his lashing out was a side effect of rabies. They ran tests to rule it out. Results came back clear. Teddy was rabies-free, but he still had a long journey to make him well enough to find a new family. His movements and general attitude were low energy, and he needed to increase activity to lose some pounds. Once the kind rescue workers started spoiling Teddy, his sourness melted away. In its place was a soft, gentle, somewhat slimmer, long-coated sweetheart. His story gained viral traction, and he had a wide fan base cheering on his fitness journey. Teddy didn't have to wait long for his happily ever after. Jesse, a vet tech for the rescue, fell hard for his sad puppy dog eyes. The forces of nature made sure Teddy was found and granted the fairy tale life he deserved. Of course, there were a few kind souls doing the same.